Hi everyone, my name is Sasha. And my name is Scott. We travel full time in our new Camp Cirrus 920 truck camper. Today we would like to share with you five boondocking essentials. Our number one essential is water. Our truck camper's fresh tank holds 38 gallons of water, and that'll get us about three to four days. And because we try to push our boondocking stays well past three to four days, we've started carrying these jugs. These are each six gallons, and we have four of them, which gives us 24 gallons of water. That's enough to get us about another three days. We've tried many different types of containers. What works best for us is these hard-sided containers. Since we use them all of the time, we want them to hold their shape even when they're empty because we have our truck packed kind of like Tetris. So if we didn't have them holding this space, everything would fall in around them. So after the first three or four days and we start to run low on water, we'll come out and grab one of these and dump it into the fresh tank. They weigh about 50 pounds each and it makes it a little bit of a challenge to get them into the fresh tank. Let me show you how we do it. On our camper, the fresh water fill is, is relatively high, but it's actually worked out perfectly for me because I'm short and the jug will fit right on my head. We open this up, then we open our tank here, remove this little cover plug, and I pull out this air vent to make it drain much faster. So this sits right on my head and allows me to dump it in directly. I'll open up this air vent to help it drain more quickly. And this is another reason we've stuck with these jugs, because they fit into our fresh fill so perfectly. Good, good, good. Try to get that last few few drops out of it. Once we start running low on water, we try to only put one jug at a time in. And just in case something goes wrong, we always have something in reserve. We've sometimes forgotten to shut the pump off and that could be pretty disastrous if you're really depending on the water. Once we get down to our last two jugs, that's when we start trying to find water because sometimes it's not easy. Speaking of that, we try to refill for free as much as possible. That means you have to ask for water. We tend to ask uh, fire departments, home improvement stores, tractor supplies, and just various locations. And we've had a lot of luck so far. Most of the time people can really understand that we just need a little bit of water and they're willing to help. We tend to refill our six gallon jugs in Walmart and we would pay about $4, which is not bad at all. We've learned a few tricks for conserving water. Um, our two main water uses are doing dishes and showering. We only have one sink, so we use this bowl as a second container to wash our dishes in. We do our dishes once a day. We let them soak in the water so they're much easier to wash, and that allows us to conserve a lot of water. When we're finished washing the dishes, we'll rinse them all at once. We'd like to mention our faucet. It has two spray modes and it helps us to reduce the amount of water that we use. It's super easy to control because you can just let it trickle. So another major use of water is showering and I have longer hair so I need more water to shower. We have this oxygenic shower head and we really love it. This little, little thing uh, helps us to control the water and reduces the flow when we need to. So whenever I shower and then I would need to pause, I would just put it down and that helps us a lot. And this little valve, um, it actually came with a camper. It shuts off the water completely, which really helps when you're showering and you don't want to deal with the, the faucet, you just shut it off. Then if you want to turn it on again, super simple. The next one is food. 
if you're planning to be away from services, it's really important to stock up with food. Uh, we try to fill our fridge with as much food as we can. Uh, usually it looks like this when it's full. You can see there's not much empty space. And we also have our freezer, it's right there. We have some popsicles, it's, it's for Scott. We like to buy our meat in bulk, like pork or chicken. We break it up into individual servings and that would make it way easier to organize the freezer. And that also allows us to only defrost what we need. And we also have our pantry area. There's a little, little bit of everything in here. We have our peanut butter, our vitamins, our supplements, our spices. So we use it as some additional food storage as well. We store our bulkier items up here like bread and chips and cereal. This is our emergency stash of food. Uh, we would try to keep this box full whenever we would go to really remote areas, whenever we would know that we don't have a lot of stores around. We would normally store some additional canned goods and dry foods in there. And that would keep us going for additional two or three days. We have one more cabinet that we use for storing food. This cabinet, as you can see, is packed with food. We have some ramen noodles, potatoes, uh, more cans, rice. So it's basically our dry food storage. If we're running out of fresh food, we would use one of these items. It's been working very well. Huh? <laughs> Looks like our food is ready. So we have to go eat. Power. If you're gonna be going out into the boondocks, you need to bring some kind of power supply with you. Not only does your camper need it to run virtually everything in it, but you're going to probably want to be able to charge your cell phones and anything else that you would want to use while you're out. For us, we live and work full time in here and our power needs are pretty high. We usually leave our laptops running 24 hours a day and that eats up a lot of power. To give ourselves extended runtime, we've upgraded our batteries from the original AGM batteries that were installed. The two of those only gave us about 100 amp hours of power. That was good for about a half a day. The lithium batteries that we're using were a custom design. In our Cirrus 920, the battery storage is underneath this dinette seat. That puts some space restrictions on what I could fit in here. We have a total of 600 amp hours of usable battery. They're easy to service and they're very, very rugged, which allows them to handle all the bumps and vibration that we experience while driving. Those batteries power all of the 12 volt accessories that we need and charge all of our cell phones and run a lot of the other equipment that we have. It's also hooked up to our inverter. This is a 2000 watt Xantrex inverter. And it's a tight fit, but it's been working really well for us. On some of the hotter days, we were able to test out the batteries by using the inverter to power the AC. We got about 12 to 14 hours of usage out of it before the batteries were completely dead. We were really happy with that. One of my hopes with installing the new batteries was that if we were ever out someplace and it was really, really hot, we would have the ability to run the AC for a little while, at least until it cooled down at night. We're also able to run our microwave and convection oven pretty much as long as we need to. So if we wanted to bake something in the oven for an hour, we could do that and it really wouldn't affect the batteries too much. As soon as we're able to get our solar set up and our alternator charging set up, we should be able to run all of that stuff anytime we want because most of the time we drive a couple hours a day while we travel. That two hours of charging every day should be enough to keep us topped off. Choo choo, Hi. train's going by. We're having a really hard time getting the parts that we need because of all of the shipping delays. So for now, we're still relying on our Honda generator to keep everything charged up. We're able to go two to three days and then we have to run our generator for between five and 10 hours to recharge the batteries. Another big consideration when we boondock is fuel. Two of the big fuel sources are gonna be gasoline for our generator as well as our propane. Our camper has two of these 20 pound propane tanks that slide out. And this does have an automatic transfer valve, which we, we like, but we don't like. Because of the potential of you running both of your tanks empty and not having any propane left, we always make sure that we leave, usually this rear tank, off, completely off. So if this one runs out, we'll know because whatever's running is gonna shut down. We'll come out and manually switch it. That way we always know how much propane we have. I also always try to keep this tank full and only run off of this one. So if we're in a situation where we run this out, which has happened several times because of the generator, it just consumes so much propane, that even once that's out, we still have this because we need it for cooking, we need it for heat and hot water. So if you have an automatic transfer valve, consider 
shutting off one of the tanks that's not in use so that it doesn't accidentally drain down. Also, one of our favorite places to fill these is at Tractor Supply. They accurately charge you per gallon and they're all trained on how to properly fill the tanks. We really like the way they do it. We've driven many, many miles out of the way just to have Tractor Supply fill our tanks. And then like I mentioned earlier, we run the generator, which hopefully will be a thing of the past in the next few months. But right now we're storing our gas on the front of the truck. I don't want to have it in the truck and we don't really have any other place to put it. So this rack up front has been really useful. And I just bungee cord it down and with three bungee cords just in case. And it's actually held on there really well. At this point, I might need to get another gas tank because we're going through so much with the generator. Since the parts for the alternator charger will be here in the next week, I should be able to get that installed and skip the gas. Once we're able to finish the solar and the alternator charging setup, that should complete our power system. We'll make some videos about that. We'll let you know what we've come up with and share all of the problems that we've encountered with it. Trash. While you're boondocking, there's usually not a lot of places to dispose of your trash. That means you have to store it. We've been using this metal container for our daily trash and it's been working very well with just small shopping bags. We save our shopping bags and we store them in this Camco bag dispenser. The benefit of using shopping bags is, first of all, they're free and they're also small enough to fit in the regular size trash barrel. That means we don't need a dumpster, we can just stop by a gas station or Walmart and just get rid of our trash there. Once our trash can is full, we put our trash in a regular size kitchen trash bag to prevent leaks and smells and we put that in the truck um, on the passenger side on the floor. Uh, that allows us to free up some room so our trash doesn't pile up here and we also learn not to leave our trash outside because it, it attracts animals, it makes a huge mess and it's just not a very good thing to do. There are also a few additional tips that we learned while traveling full time. Make sure you have plenty of quarters. We use quarters for laundry, dump stations, vending machines, collecting water, uh, parking. But recently, uh, because of the coin shortage, we ran into the trouble of getting them. So now we try to stock up with them whenever we can. Uh, and we keep our coins in these prescription bottles. Uh, the bottles are nice and durable and they fit in our pockets easily. One of the small tricks that we've learned to conserve power is to reduce the number of things that are running all of the time. We have a few devices that tend to run a lot. That's our MoFi access point that we use with our AT&T cellular plan. We also have a, a WeBoost cell booster back here and an Alpha Networks Wi-Fi booster. And we don't want those to run all the time. We got this four circuit switch box. This allows us to turn things on one at a time and only run them when we need them. The longer we're on the road full time, the more we like boondocking. We like that it's free, we like the privacy, and we like the places that it takes us. One of the biggest takeaways we have from those experiences is being conservative. The less water, fuel, and energy that we use, the longer we can stay out without having to resupply. We've also found it very important to prepare before we go out someplace in the wilderness. When we were getting ready to go out into the deserts, we stocked up with as much food as we could fit in the camper and still live in it comfortably. And it allowed us to last about two weeks before we needed to go grocery shopping again. Granted, by the end, we were down to ramen noodles and pasta and canned goods. It wasn't the most balanced meals, but it kept us going until we were able to find a town where we could get some fresh vegetables. One of the important things that we needed for our setup is some type of cell phone booster. We went with a WeBoost Drive 4GX and we installed the external antenna up here. I have it on a painting pole which extends up and that gives us about an additional six feet of height which gets us up over the camper and definitely gives us better signal reception. I had to come back inside because it was starting to rain. If you guys have more questions about how we stay connected on the road, please let us know and we can make a video about it in the future. It's a complicated topic and probably deserves its own video. We're going to put links to everything that we've talked about in this video in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you'd like us to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please let us know down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. That would really help us. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everyone. No, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Sasha. And I'm Scott. We live full time in our <laughs> <laughs> we live full time in our 
New camp, serious 920 truck camper. It's right there. See that thing? We live in it. Write it down. I have it right there. I can't remember it. Well, I wrote it down. Maybe that's fine. Let me practice it a couple times. We something. What do we do? We live in our camper. We don't live in it. We travel full time in our new camp series 920 say, truck you camper. Living it too. It's fun. We travel. We travel full time in our what is it? New camp. We live full. We travel full time in our new camp series 920 truck camper. That's a lot of words. And then all right. Uh, hey everyone. I'm Sasha. Or my, my name, name is Sasha. Sasha, and I'm Scott. We lit. We travel. We travel full time in our new Camp Cirrus 920 truck camper. We travel full time in our new Camp Cirrus 920 truck camper. Pumped up. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Sasha. And my name is Scott. We live. <laughs> <laughs> we travel full time in our Cirrus 9. No. We travel full time in our. <laughs> Um, and if you haven't done so, what? Consider whatever, whatever you want to say. Doing so, consider subscribe is in the end. Do that.